Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today in honour of w Women in History Month I'm going to be talking about some fantastic books about women throughout history and all of them also happen to be women authors so that's a fun little kind of double bonus. So I did this video a couple of years ago as well for again another Women in History Month and I will link that video down below or in the cards. This is a completely different selection of books so if you are interested in this area and want again entirely different recommendations please do check out that one as well so you'll get a double whammy doubling up of all the rest. So we are going to jump in and the first one I'm going to talk about is The Queens of Animation by Nathalia Holt. This would be perfect if you're planning on doing the Her Storyathon readathon that's happening through the month of March. I will link it down below. This would fit the criteria for stage or screen queens perfectly because this is about the women animators and storytellers of Walt Disney who frequently did not get recognition that they deserved. It's a really interesting look at their lives focusing on a couple of particular women's careers um, but it also details a history of Disney as a whole which is very interesting interesting. He was uh, going to go bankrupt at several points, was not always the most popular person on the planet, so very interesting there. And also a history of animation charting back from kind of very early days when you're talking about hand-drawn painted things, the different effects that they did, and then the introduction of computer animation and the way that that completely changed the game again. It is a wonderful sort of triple whammy of history in there and is just a really great, very well handled book that has a lovely pace to it and is just incredibly accessible and really, really interesting. I think that these kind of unsung women of insert whatever industry here are some of my favourite women in history books to read. The next one I wanted to talk about is She Wolves by Helen Castor. This is the woman who ruled England before Elizabeth I. So Elizabeth I is very much one of our big name um, sort of queens both in the literal and more slang sense of the word of British history but there were plenty of women who ruled the throne who were incredibly powerful in their own right before Elizabeth came along and this book looks at three of them. So we have Matilda, Eleanor of Aquitaine, uh, Elizabeth of France and Margaret of Anjou. Apologies, four! I nearly forgot M Margaret of Anjou at the end. This is a really interesting look at quite a wide range of different British history and also how Britain has interacted with various people um, in Europe, mainly France being sort of a, a big one in there um, and is really really interesting. It does get a bit repetitive in places but that is the fault of history not of the fault of this book. We call too many people Louis and Henry and genuinely we need to change more names oh my god why did they do that but other than that fact it is really really interesting and it is a great way of introducing yourself to a wide range of time periods from British history and just some kick-ass women. Eleanor of Aquitaine is my personal favourite but tell me who you think is really cool from this. The next one is again talking about uh, women rulers but this time from a completely different part of the world and that is When Women Ruled the World by uh, Kat, sorry, Kara Cooney. This is a look at six ancient Egyptian queens and the various ways that they ruled um, now, I get the vibe that Kara Cooney is a little bit more controversial in Egyptology than her book makes it out to be, and there were some quite grand claims in it that she didn't really back up, um, which if you read a fair amount of history, you will clock them and go, hmm, I think citation is needed there. But if you know very little about ancient Egyptian history, like myself, this is an incredibly interesting intro into the subject and covers some incredibly powerful, interesting women. Obviously it covers Cleopatra, she is one of the big name ones, again, sort of a landmark person from pop cultural history, but it covers a huge range of other people who I'd never heard of before and really introduced us to the way that the dynasties worked and sort of, the, again, the way that royalty worked and kind of the ruling classes within ancient Egypt and for me has really been like a jumping off point for a bunch of other books that I desperately want to read. So really very cool and, you know, great classic feminist, let's check out the women rulers kind of book. If you want to go down more of a history of science, we have a lab of one's own by Patricia Farah. This is a look specifically at how the First World War kind of opened the door and changed the game for women scientists and created a bit more space for them to be able to um, kind of claim their own sort of turf to be able to study things. Hence the riff of a lab of one's own referencing Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. Now full confession I did start reading this just as my course started and then frantically tried to finish it off in the first month so the details are a little bit hazy but I do remember really enjoying it and I don't know if that's a good enough endorsement or not. This isn't the most detailed review I've ever given you guys, I'm not going to lie, um, but I I liked it, it was good fun, and I remember thinking everything was very cool whilst I was learning about it, even if none of it immediately jumps to mind because memory is really hard when you're forcing your brain to have to learn things for an exam, it means that the fun stuff that you're just doing because it's interesting kind of gets shunted by the wayside. So please do read this and tell me in the comments down below what particular fact from it you liked the most because I got nothing for you. One that I do remember far more about is The Radium Girls by 
by Kate Moore. This is a fantastic history book looking at the Radium Girls who were a group of women workers who worked for a um, watchmaking company that basically used radium paint to paint on the numbers and the hands on the watches so that they glowed. This was before we realised that radium was incredibly dangerous and we actually thought it was genuinely beneficial for the body. Um, we soon learned that we were swiftly wrong but it's about the fact that the women were exposed to the radium and then the horrible ramifications that occurred on their health and then the company's refusal to change regulations to do anything about it and to not um, compensate these women appropriately. I have a whole video either out or coming out about workers rights and books and sort of podcasts connected to this area but Kate Hall Kate Moore handles this with such like tact and sensitivity. It's an incredibly interesting look at these women's lives, what it was like to work there, the ramifications on their health, like I said, and also just kind of it as a landmark case for workers' rights in general. Really fascinating point for sort of, um, like I say, women's rights. Talking of women's rights and being exploited, we also have The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sloot. So Henrietta Lacks was a woman whose cells were taken without her consent and then were used in many, many, many science experiments going forward because she became what's called a healer cell which is actually just the code based off of her name i didn't know this when i come across healer cells in many 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 other um pop science books in the past um but basically her cells but she had cancer cells that they took um, and they managed to do like continuous replication so they have been used in countless science experiments over the years because you don't have the variation of like cell type because the, you are tracking it on every single like every single cell is technically the same now, uh, she did not give consent for this. Her family saw none of the money that came from the various advancements from this or the fact that these cells were replicated and then sold on. And this book is a, basically a look at how this has happened um, and a, an attempt to try and get, again, some compensation for them. It's very interesting and Rebecca actually gets to know the Lack family very, very well. Um, so you do get a lot more of a personal touch to this as well as an incredibly interesting look at a history of science and how this became the foundation and basis for so much testing that we've done in since then um, and sort of a, a landmark way of changing how we do science experiments so you're getting kind of a double whammy of about a woman but also about a bit of history and science which is very interesting the next one I wanted to mention is Blue Stocking by Jane Robinson. This is a remarkable story of the first women to fight for an education and is about women trying to get accepted into universities such as Oxford and Cambridge and how the Blue Stockings, which were the group who were really pioneering for this, managed to sort of break down these glass ceilings, get into these education establishments and then hold their places and what their day-to-day -day lives were like. Now, it is about quite privileged people. They are obviously in a position of um, sort of marginalization because they are women not being allowed into male dominated spaces. However, they are women who are often white and often from incredibly or like more wealthy backgrounds because that's the only way that they would be able to get their foot in the door in the first place. So you do have to accept that fact walking in that these are not the most down and out, most downtrodden women ever. But the point still stands and actually if these people who are definitely considered societally speaking the upper echelons can't get an education then what hope does anybody else have and they very much broke down doors and were the the first people the kind of pioneers to put up with the being the only woman in the space um at the lectures and to put up with the constantly being um kind of downtrodden by their lecturers and to have to really fight to get the recognition that they deserved so it's just something to bear in mind going in it is quite short as well so there isn't a crazy amount of detail in the way that i possibly would have wanted but it is an interesting read especially from like a history of education kind of perspective and it is a landmark moment for women and women's education. And then the final one I wanted to talk about is Witches by Tracy Borman. This is a look specifically at James I in the English witch hunts because witchcraft and witch hunts across history has happened time and time again in many different locations. So let's narrow it down and like really focus our scope of investigation, shall we? This one is fantastic. I love this book. I love Tracy Borman. I think she has a wonderful writing style, incredibly accessible, very interesting. That good balance between like narrative flow but the amount of detail that you would want, which I really appreciate in my history books. Now, this is a look at the witch hunts and the fact that James definitely did gun for women a lot more. Women were persecuted within the witch hunts, but it's kind of trying to dispel the idea that this came from a very angry, anti-feminist, let's get the women kind of movement. And instead actually was a lot of sort of women on women crime as well. Basically, if you were just ostracized or on the outskirts of your local village or your little community, you were incredibly likely to have the charge of witchcraft thrown at you. Um, the fact that they tended to be women on the outskirts uh, is a commentary in a different way but it definitely kind of refutes the idea that it was men actively trying to burn women down. Um, so yeah very very interesting book and a really 
cool part of history. There you have it, those are I think about eight, I didn't actually count this time around, books recommendations about women in history. Do let me know in the comments down below, have you read any of these, do you agree with me, do you disagree and do you have any other recommendations? Like I said I have an entire other video about this so please do check that out for 10 other books that I think are really really fantastic, great representation in this area um, and yeah that's about it really, have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!